Hello everyone, it is my great pleasure and great honor to speak here today at the 75th anniversary celebration of CWI. My name is Lisa, I'm a researcher in the CWI Cryptology Group and today I would like to talk about secure computation and where I see the future or at least one future of secure computation that is secure computation with silent preprocessing. So what is secure computation? Imagine you have a number of hospitals that gathered some medical data from their patients and you had the following two options to choose from. Um, either you decide to gather all the data um, to find, for example, the optimal treatments, or you just say, well, let's better not gather medical data because they contain, contain privacy critical information. Um, which of the options would you choose for? And now the cool thing about secure computation is that basically you don't have to choose anymore. So um, you can compute on distributed data while preserving individual privacy. And um, how can you do so? Instead of looking at complex medical studies, let's uh, take a look at a simpler example. Imagine there's four people that just want to compute their average age. Um, what can they do? Well, the first party can think of a random number um, sent on, on her age, blinded by this um, random number. Um, the next person can add their age um, to the sum and so on and so on. Finally, uh, the first person after going around in the circle, the first person can subtract, subtract their age, uh, um, divide by four and send the result to all the parties. So I hope that you see that this gives, that this is correct, but is it also secure? Now, what does it mean to be secure? So ideally, what, what we would like to have is that we, had, we have like a trusted entity, say unicorn, where all the parties can send their inputs to. Um, the unicorn does all the computation and in the end just outputs the average age, but nothing else to the parties. This is what we want to achieve. And unfortunately, as unicorns don't exist and we're stuck in the real world, um, where all we can do is the parties communicate with each other. We say that the protocol in the real world is secure. Basically, if the parties cannot learn or interfere more in the real world than they could in the ideal world. So going back to the example, what does it mean? If you look here at a single corrupted party, say Carol, then all she gets to see is a random value and the final result. So this is not more that, that she could learn in the ideal world. So if we assume everyone follows the protocol execution and there's just one party corrupted, then this is secure. But what if parties collude? So what if, for example, Alice and Carol get together? Well, then they can compute not only the average age of Bob and Dave as they could in the ideal world, but they can actually derive both Bob's and Dave's age. So this is not secure if more than one party is corrupt. Okay, so now we saw a very simple um, protocol uh, for, for a very simple um, problem and not very strong security guarantee. So is, is this all we can do? And uh, fortunately not. So we already know since the 80s that basically every computation that, that you can think of, every function that you might want to compute, you can, you can do so. So either um, if you assume that at least less than ha half the parties are colluding, so you have an honest majority. Or um, if you if you um, rely on public key cryptography, you can even tolerate that all but one parties are corrupted. And I want to stress here that this is not only the case um, if you assume that parties uh, follow the protocol, but also uh, but also um, um, for 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 parties that uh, try to try to uh, do whatever they want to do in order to get the most information or in order to screw up the, the computation in the end. And what I would also like to highlight here is that, um, as, as you might have guessed already by the picture, uh, that uh, in, David Chom was um, part of this early development. So you can say that secure computation was at least in part already uh, born at CWI. And now, um, okay, so I hope you have an idea now what secure computation um, is and, and, and well, you believe me that we can do it and, and why do we care? So we had the beginning examples, but what, what are other contexts where this is useful for? And a very straightforward one are electronic auctions, electronic voting, for example, auctions for financial markets, electricity markets, where you want to um, hide the, the individual bids. Um, you can, as, as, I, as I already said in the, in the 
um, beginning example, you can use it for privacy preserving computation on distributed databases. For example, in a project that CWI was also involved in, um, it was shown how to use secure computation to find the best individual HIV treatment or to, de to detect bank fraud. And uh, finally, it's also useful to securely uh, set up cryptographic infrastructure um, whenever you want to decentralize uh, trust. So for example, if you want to set up a, a cryptographic key, but you don't want like one single party to be in possession of this key. Okay, so uh, we can do it um, basically um, since since the 80s. And and uh, and yeah, as you can see here also on the slide, this is something that's that's already happening and that's already also happening in practice. So practice. So is it is it all solved? Can we can we sit back now? Can we can we researchers move on to another topic? And um, this is not the case. Um, so why is that? Um, the, the generic compilers um, from the 80s, and of course, there has been done a lot of work since then, um, unfortunately, typically introduce a large overhead in terms of communication and computation. So what we have that you can get from a fast algorithm, uh, from an algorithm to a secure computation solution, we don't have yet that you can get from a fast al algorithm to a fast secure computation solution. And the goal is, um, really uh, to bring secure computation to everyday life. And this is something that's, that's, that's starting now, but we're not quite there yet. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and the question is, is how, how do we get there? So uh, one direction is of course, like look at specific tasks and then um, really tailor secure computation solutions for that. And, and the other direction is, is work on, on making this arrow green. So really get a generic compiler um, to transform a fast algorithm really into a fast secure computation solution. And for the rest of the talk, I, I want to um, I want to focus on on how 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 we can get there and and maybe like explain a first step towards getting there and and what what my research or what my research um, does basically. And so a very promising um, approach towards getting secure computation really practical is basically to push all the expensive part into an input independent preprocessing phase that the uh, that the parties can uh, can can already perform ahead of time ahead of like the actual computation taking place and one thing that turns out very useful to 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 generate in this preprocessing phase is basically random multiplications because random multiplications help you to perform multiplications in the computation uh, very very efficiently and also with uh, security against dishonest majority and and so here uh, you see example like for the two party case and and for the rest of the rest of the talk i will i will focus on on the two party case and And this is this is this is very cool, but this is not this is not yet practical because the problem is that kind of now we pushed this this expensive part of preprocessing phase, and now the preprocessing phase is, is the bottleneck. And and even though of course you can tolerate like more uh, more computation and and also more like generally more overhead if you can do it ahead of time, what really a problem about this approach is that the the, the communication and storage that you need uh, of the preprocessing scales with the number of multiplication that you have to perform in the computation. So the more complex your program is, um, the the more you have to communicate, and and this gets even worse uh, if you. Um, if you if you if you don't have this unicorn just stealing out this random multiplications, but you have to actually uh, generate those multiplications securely. So um, so this is basically and because communication is often bottleneck because because we're we're often in 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 uh, uh, we often have to deal with slow networks as as I'm sure you all know. Um, this is uh, this is really something that that keeps this from 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 being practical yet. And, and the rest of the talk, I want to I want to explain how, how we can get rid of this dependency. So having the preprocessing uh, not scale with the complexity of the program, and thereby get secure computation, where um, really the the major part of the preprocessing is is silent, and and uh, and the communication is much much short, like much much less than the number of multiplications that that you need. And so, so the idea is, what, what do we want? So we need the, the parties to get many multiplication triples, but we don't want to communicate many multiplications triple, even like thinking in the unicorn case for now. 
and and well straight straightforward or like what we want is so we want to compress this so we want to somehow give like something a short seed or so that then the party can expand and and it's important that this part is silent so so that the parties can expand their seed to the output without communicating with each other and so we know how to compress uh, randomness or pseudo randomness which is essentially as good as randomness and via via so-called pseudo random generators that, that that allow us to do this to um expand the short seed into something that that looks pretty much exactly like uh, like randomness but the hard part is that we have this additional structure here so we have to we have this as we have for for such a multiplication triple to be useful we have to have that c0 plus c1 um hold by the two parties is the same as the product of a times b and this this would not be a problem if 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 we could just give the information to all parties but really the hard part here is to compress C0 and 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 C1 for 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 the parties without revealing the the other party secret which is which is really crucial for security in in the computation phase. And and now this is where uh, where you you have to go with a bit of magic happening. So so basically we show that if you use uh, to get this structure you use structure preserving secret sharing techniques and a very specifically tailored pseudo random generator that that then you can uh, basically evaluate this jointly um, and that gives you a, a way to generate not not only pseudo randomness but pseudo random correlation so so for example this multiplication this random or pseudo random multiplication tuples that i talked about and really the hard part is not uh, to get this uh, theoretically to work but the hard part is to get something concretely efficient and 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 um uh, that's that's basically um what we showed and I, I just talked about basically how to how to improve this this ideal world for now where we have this unicorn, but we also show how how then to how, how then get rid of the unicorn and and let the parties uh, do the setup themselves. And uh, this leads not not only theoretically, as I said, to an improvement, but but really concretely, you can see for 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 regimes that you care about, you can get up to like a factor of thousand less less communication and over slow networks. Um, uh, this this results even though you have more you have a bit more computation this results in a in a in a in a like really significant speed up and um, the work builds on assumption that cannot be be broken by quantum algorithms so uh, so uh, this is important for 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 giving long term security guarantees into a future where we might have a quantum computer and uh, and we we also show how you can have kind of reusable seeds that you cannot only use once for 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 evaluating one program but basically you just have this once and then you have secure computation for life and so i said i said we're not there yet or 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 we we don't have this this green error and and so why is that like why can we not just use this now and and we're all done so um there there's a problem really with the with the concrete efficiency so so this improvements that i mentioned here is just for 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 boolean um circuits and and also only in the two party um two party setting and and you can also get efficient constructions in a multi party setting but then only over over circuits over large fields uh, arithmetic circuits and there's some correlations that that are very useful and that we don't we know how to construct them, but we don't know how to really like get really practical constructions yet. So um, the goal, um, looking ahead into the future, the goal is still um, bringing secure computation to everyday life, and and this is something that will be happening, that that we will all see happening, and that I'm very excited about. Um, and and my goal, or or what I uh, what I see my uh, part in and and what 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 would kind of really be the the, the dream goal in this in this silent preprocessing um, line of work uh, would to get like really fully silent preprocessing in the multi-party setting. So everyone just publishes one seat, and then and then just by the information of the other party seat, you get uh, you get efficient secure computation for life and and without a unicorn, just just uh, like plainly like that and. And I, I really hope we'll get there. And I also hope you're um, you're a bit excited about secure computation now. And uh, I'd be very happy about questions. And I want to thank you. Uh, 
uh, for the for the attention.